Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh. And um, we're going to cover part 24 of the Montana CDL manual for 2016. These videos are taking forever to upload because the internet here is not perfect or even close to good, really. So I think when it comes time for me to deal with truck stop Wi-Fi, um, I'm going to be primed for that and, and, you know, it'll be good. It'll probably be a step up from what I have now. So, <laughs> it's taking a while to upload them, please forgive that. I pretty much always have a video uploading and we're only on, I think, video number 7 that's uploading now. It's at like 12%. So, we're doing what we can. Okay, so I recorded this section before and a funny thing is happening. Uh, a couple of funny things are happening and I'm sharing a little bit of my feelings here because I feel like you and I as we've been study buddies for a while you know I feel like there's a there's there's a bond here personally I feel and um, <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna explain a little bit of what's going on I'm I used to think I was a very happy-go-lucky guy and since then I've come to realize now I'm in my mid almost late 30s I'm 36 and um, I realize that I am type A and I'm serious and I am a thinker and I, I very much uh, always thinking. It's very hard to shut my brain off. So as I'm reading this manual, um, number one, my mortality is very evident to me because I'm like, Oh my god, rollover risks. Oh my god, steer gently. Oh, center of gravity. And I'm not scared, per se, but I'm like, this is serious. This is serious because not only am I going to have my girlfriend and dog in the car, but I'm going to be literally holding people's lives in these two paws. And that's very serious, and it's a very sober thought. Um, and sobering and it, it's really a big deal and I was talking to Maggie about this yesterday um, and honestly it's just I find myself getting stressed as I'm reading these sections and I find myself trying to get through them quickly because I feel the stress and I want to get through it to the other side but what's been happening is I haven't been processing what I've been feeling and so therefore it's not passing I'm just it was festering so I talked to Maggie about it um what yesterday what did we talk yesterday about it yeah yeah and um and I feel a great deal better about it because um when I shared it with her they say, like, a good friend is the best mirror, and Maggie is nothing if not my best friend. And, um, so... Did you say I'm not your best friend? I said you're nothing if not my best friend. Oh, I like this word. <laughs> <laughs> and so, when I shared these thoughts with her, she was kind of like, well... I feel like that's going to make you a good driver because you take this seriously and you're not just like a 20 something um, with an immortality complex. And it's true. Um, when I was in my early to mid 20s, I. There were times when I would drive faster than I should have because I wasn't thinking like, oh, you know. I have a lot of life left to live and I don't want to check out early and also I don't want to cause someone else harm or death like I would never be able to forgive myself and now I think of these things because I'm a family man so it's interesting how I've changed and the approach that I've taken to this uh, CDL the study to this is real life like when I'm reading these things I'm literally picturing, picturing myself in these scenarios. Like, what will I do? Because this is... I, Ellie, um, in one of her videos, was like, this is a thing that I'm going to be doing. 
And I love that because not only is that like the law of attraction, but it's also like being very cognitively aware of like this, this is real, you know? And it's weird to feel that way before I get behind the wheel of a truck because it's almost like surreal. Like, yeah, I'm sitting here in my room and I'm talking about how I'm going to be driving one of these trucks and I'm watching videos on YouTube and I don't know, this is nothing compared to what I'm going to be experiencing. I'm aware of that. So there's a little bit where it sounds dramatic, but really I'm taking it seriously. And so... So I guess that's been a part of what I've been feeling as I've been reading like, oh, the air brake section and, you know, the risks and all of these things and like the hazmat and don't, you know, like different things like that. I'm like, wow, this is, there's a lot to this. This isn't just like, oh, let me hop in a car and drive. Um, it, it's a serious responsibility. So... It's interesting. That's That's been my thought process. But now that I've kind of talked to you about that a little bit, again, check my pants for the links to different things that you should know about. Um, not because I say so, but because uh, these things have helped me. There's also links to Allie, Ellie, and the Crafty Trucker down there in my pants. Um, please check out the description box because there's stuff there that, excuse me, I hope will help you. Okay, seven minutes of talking. Now it's time to actually cover some information. Let's get some studying done. This may sound rehearsed because I've already covered this, but the video got messed up and it cut off and like, so we're going to start over. <clears throat> Excuse me. Section number six, page 6-1, combination vehicles. This section covers driving combinations, combination vehicle air brakes, anti-lock brake systems, coupling and uncoupling, inspecting combinations. This section provides information needed to pass the tests for combination vehicles, tractor trailer, double, triples, straight truck with trailer. The information is only to give you the minimum knowledge needed for driving common combination vehicles. You should also study section seven if you need to pass the test for doubles and triples. 6.1 Driving Combination Vehicles Safely Combination vehicles are usually heavier, longer, and require more driving skill than single commercial vehicles. This means that drivers of combination vehicles need more knowledge and skill than drivers of single vehicles. In this section we talk about some important safety factors that apply specifically to combination vehicles. 6.1.1 Rollover Risks This part was specifically scary to me. More than half of truck driver deaths in crashes are the result of truck rollovers. When more cargo is piled up high, piled up in a truck, the center of gravity moves higher up from the load. The truck becomes easier to turn over. Fully loaded rigs are 10 times more likely to roll over in a crash than empty rigs. Um, specifically, Ellie just did a video where she was gonna pick up some beer or she did pick up some beer and she was talking about how it's loaded up higher and she was like so that means I'm gonna have to be very careful in turns that's why these videos are interesting for you to watch because you pick up little golden nuggets of wisdom like that that show you um, it's not just like oh reading this in a book it's like Ellie is applying that to her everyday life on her rig so for me, that almost gives me a little insight into her real-time experience. And I can't tell you how much that helps me because I absorb things like that. Like, oh, that's something I can use. Okay, so I know, like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of, that's why not only are these girls amazingly interesting and they share parts of their life and it's phenomenal, but they're also sharing tips that could literally help you save your life and the lives of others. So um, that's why I keep pushing them because not only are they awesome, but they're sharing their wisdom with us and I appreciate that personally. So 
Um, the following two things will help you prevent rollover. Keep the cargo as close to the ground as possible and drive slowly around turns. Keeping vehicles, nope, keeping cargo low is even more important in combination vehicles than in straight trucks. Also keep the load centered on your rig. If the load is to one side so it makes a trailer lean, a rollover is more likely. Make sure your cargo is centered and spread out as much as possible. Cargo, di cargo distribution is covered in section three of this manual. <coughs> Rollovers happen when you turn too fast. Drive slowly around corners, on ramps, and off ramps. Avoid quick lane changes, especially when fully loaded. 6.1.2, steer gently. Trucks with trailers have a dangerous crack the whip effect. When you, make a quick, when you make a quick lane change, the crack the whip effect can turn the trailer over. There are many accidents where, the only, where only the trailer has overturned. Rearward amplification causes the crack the whip effect. Um, figure 6-1 shows eight different types of combination vehicles and the rearward amplification each has in a quick lane change. Rigs where the least crack the whip effect are shown at the top and those with the most at the bottom. Rearward amplification of 2.0 in the chart means that the rear trailer is twice as likely to turn over as the tractor. You can see that triples have a rearward amplification of 3.5. This means you can roll the last trailer of triples 3.5 times as easily as a five axle trailer. Steer gently and smoothly when you're pulling trailers. If you make a sudden movement with your steering wheel, your trailer could tip over. Follow far enough behind other vehicles at least one second for each 10 feet of your vehicle length, plus another second if going over 40 miles per hour. Now let's stop for a second. Again, in one of uh, Ellie's tweets, um, and again, I keep talking about these guys because they are honestly sharing enough of their daily lives that it gives people like me an insight into what I may be experiencing and it's helping to prepare me and I've really uh, Maggie and I have really immersed ourselves in these videos watching different youtubers and and watching their entire vlog um, especially the drives that they show now it's true I really like hearing everyone talk because I'm you know I enjoy that but specifically seeing them seeing where they are in their lanes and it it's interesting but um back to the point Ellie um had uh had tweeted about um she took some da dash cam footage and I think it was off of her GoPro but um they were one second apart and it like showed you how a car cut right in front of her and honestly like those are things where it's like if she hadn't had that following distance, there could have been a death. And it's so serious. But it's also, um, it's just, it all comes down to retaining the knowledge and being uh, so prepared that it doesn't matter if some other dumb driver messes up because we're so prepared that we are protecting them from themselves. So that's kind of how I look at it. Because from what I understand, four-wheelers are kind of dumb, and I was one of them. I would pull in front of a tractor trailer because I didn't want to be stuck behind them. Stupid. But to be honest, I didn't know any better. I just, I did not understand air brakes. And I was just like, well, they do this for a living, you know, whatever. I never even thought of it that far. So it's just really interesting that, um how many things can go wrong but you can prevent them all by by being prepared, cautious, and aware. So uh, anyway, that's kind of a little food for thought that I was thinking of earlier when I was uh, looking through Twitter. Okay, look far enough down the road to avoid being surprised and having to make a sudden lane change. At night, drive slowly enough to see obstacles with your headlights before it's too late to change lanes or stop gently. Slow down to a safe speed before going into a turn. 6.1.3. 
Brake early. Control your speed whether fully loaded or empty. Large combination vehicles take longer to stop when they're empty than when they're fully loaded. When fully loaded, the very stiff suspension... There's Harvey. Hey, Arv. Hey, Arv. What's up? When lightly loaded, the very stiff suspension springs and strong brakes give poor traction and make it very easy to lock up the wheels. Your trailer can swing out and strike other vehicles. Your tractor can jackknife very quickly. You also must be very careful about driving bobtail tractors, tractors without semi-trailers. Tests have shown that bobtails can be very hard to stop smoothly. It takes them longer to stop than a tractor semi-trailer loaded to maximum gross weight. In any combination rig, allow lots of following distance and look far ahead so you can break early. Don't be caught by surprise and have to make a panic stop. Okay, now I'm going to show you the figure that they want me to show you. I'm not sure if you can really see it that well, but hopefully... Oh, I don't know if that helped or hurt. Ah, okay. So essentially you could see you're going down and your chance of rollover uh, gets more and more and more as you go down. So that by the time you get to triples... Uh, your chance of rolling over, of that last one rolling over, is 3.5. Um, the chance of, you know, just one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now we're on page 6-2. 6 6.1.4. Railroad Highway Crossings. Railroad highway crossings can also cause problems, particularly when pulling trailers with low underneath clearance. This is one of the questions they can ask, and I always kind of get messed up on this one. Um, also, please forgive me if I get frustrated. Uh, I have to do something. I, I The way that I learn is by doing things, or I can learn by repetition. So I get kind of frustrated with myself when I read you a section and then I get to the questions and I don't know the answers. I feel stupid. So that's kind of just a little insight into me. So if we get to the questions and I don't know them, I may get frustrated because I don't like feeling stupid. And that makes me feel stupid. So just a little, again, moving on. Um, these trailers can get stuck on raised crossings. Low slung units... Um, one is a low boy, another is a car carrier, another is a moving van, and then another is helpfully called a possum belly livestock trailer. All of those can get um, stuck. Single axle trailer pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate a tandem axle tractor. If for any reason you get stuck on the tracks, you okay? Oh my, don't turn on the light. Get out of the vehicle and away from the tracks. Check signposts or signal housing at the crossing for an emergency notification number or information. Call 911 or other emergency number. Give the location of the crossing using all identifiable landmarks, especially the DOT number if posted. 6.1.5 Prevent Trailer Skids. When the wheels of a trailer lock up, the trailer will tend to swing around. This is more likely to happen when the trailer is empty or lightly loaded. This type of jackknife is often called a trailer jackknife. The procedure for stopping a trailer skid is to recognize that it's happening. The earliest and best way to recognize that the trailer has started to skid is by seeing it in your mirrors. Anytime you apply the brakes hard, Check your mirrors to make sure your trailer is staying where it should be. Once the trailer swings out of your lane, it's really hard to prevent a jackknife. Stop you. Oh, we're now on page 6 3. Stop using the brake. That's the next thing. After you, after you look in your mirror and you see that your trailer is swinging, leave off the brake. Release your brakes to get your traction back. Do not use the trailer hand brake if you have one to try and straighten out the rig. Um, this is absolutely wrong since the brakes on the trailer uh, wheels 
are what caused the skid in the first place. Once the trailer wheels grip the road again, the trailer is going to start following your rig, uh, the tractor, and straighten out. 6.1.6 Turn Wide When a vehicle goes around a corner, the rear wheels follow a different path than the front wheels. This is called off-tracking or cheating. Um, figure 6.3 shows how off-tracking causes the path followed by a tractor to be wider than the rig itself. Longer vehicles will off-track more. The rear wheels of the powered unit, your truck, or your, your truck or your tractor, will off-track some, and the rear wheels of the trailer will off-track even more. If there is more than one trailer, the rear wheels of the last trailer will off-track the most. Steer the front end wide enough around a corner so the rear end does not run over the curb, pedestrians, etc. However, keep the rear of your vehicle close to the curb. This will stop other drivers from passing you on the right. If you cannot complete your turn without entering another traffic lane, turn wide as you complete the turn. This is better than swinging wide to the left before starting the turn because it will keep other drivers from passing you on the right. So we're going to show you figure 6.3 and 6.4. Mm, here. This is showing how the back wheels are off tracking more even so than your rig. And for this one, it's showing you kind of how you should try and attack that and how it can be done properly and improperly. So some good examples there. Again, if you can't see the examples I'm showing you, look in your PDF because you can see it online. Or if you have the booklet, even better. Okay. 6.1.7 uh, backing with a trailer. Backing with a trailer. When backing a car, straight, truck, or bus, you turn the top of the steering wheel in the direction you want to go. When backing a trailer, you turn the steering wheel in the opposite direction. Once the trailer starts the turn, then you turn the wheel the other way to follow the trailer. Whenever you back up with a trailer, try to position your vehicle so you can back in a straight line. If you must back on a curved path, back to the driver's side so you can see. Now, obviously, you're going to have to do these backing for the, for the test at the DOT, but that's so that they know that you know how to do them, not because you're going to be doing them every day. In fact, it would be really irresponsible if you were just willy-nilly offset backing every time just because. Yeah, you might get really good at it, or by the odds, you might mess up someone else's truck and your own trailer. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, whatever you think. Now we're on page 6.4, or 6-4, um, and here is the figure that they want you to see. So this shows where your wheel is, and this shows how to turn it in order to accomplish both of these kinds of maneuvers. Alright, look at your path. Look at your line of travel before you begin. Get out and walk around the vehicle. Um, for the company that I'm joining, their mirrors are marked goal. Get out and look. Uh, check your clearance to the sides and overhead ear, in and near the path of your vehicle. Use your mirrors on both sides. Check the outside mirrors on both sides frequently. Get out of the vehicle and re-inspect your path if you're unsure. Back slowly. This will let you make corrections before you get too far off course. Correct drift immediately. As soon as you see the trailer getting off the proper path, correct it by turning the top of the steering wheel in the direction of the drift. Pull forward. When backing a trailer, make pull-ups to reposition your, your vehicle as needed. This is not a race. You do not get points for doing it as fast as possible. You get points for doing it safely and not damaging property. That's the end result. The end result is the most important thing. Okay, subsection 6.1, test your knowledge. Question one, what two things are important to prevent rollover? I would say cargo placement and going slow around curves, being careful. Um, the speed limit is not always safe for a combination motor vehicle when you're going around those curves because it's been proven, <laughs> studies have been shown that um, 
at the speed limit for curves, uh, semis can roll over. So you should be going as slow as you need to to make sure that all four of your wheels stay on the ground. And those, excuse me, of your, tra of your trailer too. Number two, when you turn suddenly while pulling doubles, which trailer is most likely to turn over? The last one. Question number three, why should you not use the trailer handbrake to straighten out a jackknifing trailer? Because those brakes were the ones that started the skid to begin with. So they're the ones that are going to, <laughs> you, want, you want to actually let off the brakes so that the wheels can start spinning again. And if you just keep going forward, that trailer will follow again. Uh, number four, what is off tracking? It's the fact that the back wheels of your rig and your trailer offset and they follow a shorter path. It's almost, it's called cheating. So they follow a shorter path than even your rig. So it's kind of, you need to be aware of that so you don't jump a curb or hit a pedestrian. Number five, when you back a trailer, you should position your vehicle so you can back in a curved path to the driver's side, true or false? No, this is false. Um, you should do a straight back whenever possible. And I know that there's a lot of situations where we won't be able to, but the book says, the manual says, that we should try, try and do a straight back whenever possible so that you can utilize both mirrors when you're going back. That's ideal. Um, second best is backing towards your driver's side so you can use your mirror to follow the back of your truck. Offset is, that's like last possible option. In fact, the manual earlier in the book said, go around the block if you need to, to avoid doing an offset backing because it's most, it's the most difficult and the least safe. So yeah. Okay, number six, what type of trailers can get stuck on a railroad cross, on railroad highway crossings? Okay, there's a low boy, there's a car trailer, there's moving vans, there's possum belly style livestock trailers, and then there's, um, uh, there's one more, um, uh, it's the, if your, um, axles are set to support a tandem style rig, I'm looking now. Single axle tractor, tractor pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate a tandem axle, axle tractor. But the other ones I got right, the low boy car carrier, moving van, <coughs> possum belly livestock trailer. Bless you. Thanks. Okay, so this is a section, why do I always lose my pen? It sounds like you get really good on that one. Well, luckily, uh, I'm starting to remember because I've done this one before. So it takes the repetition, but like I'm starting to absorb it a little bit better. I was telling them before, like, I was getting stressed and going fast. And even reading fast, like, when I watched it back, I was, like, talking really fast and reading it fast to try and get through it. Because it was parts that were making me really nervous. But after we talked, that helped because then I was like, okay, I'm nervous about this. Knowing that I was nervous about it helped me deal with that. If that makes sense. Oh, that's the heater. Okay, guys. So that's all for this video. We're going to end it here and we'll be back with part 25 and hopefully me slowing down a bit might also translate to you guys as well, hopefully. Um, we'll get through it and um, I'm actually really looking forward to getting to the end of the book and then recapping um, with some tests from the website that I keep telling you guys about. And um, then possibly doing some flashcards and then, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll figure some stuff out. Anyway, guys, I hope that you're well, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.